was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. I just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. I feel like we're a horse with blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. <laughs>
not so reliant on their partner. So if anything do happens with the husband, or then the woman is being developed, and they, she can take care of herself. She doesn't have to stay in an abusive relationship due to financial. She can really look and, yeah, and create an opportunity for herself. Whether she does the computer training or whether she becomes part of the um, sewing project, she can earn a little bit of money and create self-employment for herself and, and be independent. So I had no job and everything, and so I got about my Muna and she had a, a gardening project, and I took the course and I was in the garden. Then my Muna came to take me out of the garden and she put me here in the building. And since then, my life changed. Totally changed. I'm very happy now. I'm very happy where I am. I'm pleased and all the ladies here, we respect each other and that is how it goes forward. Cool. Thank you. Yesterday I had a case where a woman said, look, my husband is having an affair, three roads, three houses down the road. Um, I'm dependent on him financially and but the, I don't want him in my house. How do one go about it, you know? And what I would say, you know, what I normally say to women is I'm also a woman myself. And what I would like to see for myself happen, I would like to see for other women where they become self-sustainable, where they can take care and have pride in themselves as individuals, as women. She was very emotional. She was very broken down. Um, the sad part about it is when a case has been taken to the police station and the woman feels that, you know, her rights has been violated, that nobody believes her when she tells her story. And it's only a one-sided thing where the right has been taken from her and been given to the husband. It's not something that is going to change overnight. I'm not going to change her way of thinking overnight by just talking once with her. She must come in for ongoing counselling, mentoring and support. And once again, we introduce the various projects where she can come out and she, they can become part of the projects if they would like to. But just that they must know that I am here. If they need the mentoring and support, that they mustn't always just think it's about counselling. It's about woman to woman where we talk to each other and we can look at what do we want as women for ourselves and how do we feel about ourselves and moving forward from there, but it's a process. It's not an easy process for women that has been broken down. Today we bring forth all the challenges we face in our daily lives. We, the youth, we face so much challenges. We face drug abuse, alcohol abuse, we face rape, um, teenage pregnancy, peer pressure, all of that. We abuse cocaine, we abuse heroin, we abuse stuff, we abuse unga all that on the streets, because when our parents speak to us, we don't listen, we just want to be quiet. When I uh, came here into Freiho, nothing, nothing was happening where the youth were concerned. And between myself and Michael, we started um, with a particular group that was about seven years ago. And believe me, it grew into a very nice generation for change. My name is Fatima Abrams, I'm 19 years old and I'm from Mitchell's Plain. I'm Paul Kalasen, I'm 16 years old, I'm from Lewandale. I'm Ashwin Scott, I'm 20 years old, I'm from Capricorn. I'm Samantha Mzanga and I'm from Lewandale and I'm 20 years old. I'm Evan Hendricks, I'm 17 years old, I'm from Capricorn. You see the Turk is like, it's crystal meth, it's, it's this terrible drug. But the, she, both my cousins, they like for over 10 years they're on this drug. And I don't know how it actually sustains them because basically the way they are using this drug, they are abusing it, like seriously. And um, the one has three kids and with each pregnancy, like she's, she's on this crystal meth and she lands up in prison. Why? Because she steals cars, 
she steals mags, wheels from cars, she steals batteries, and it's like it's only the two of like the two girls with all these boys, you know. And um, I don't know, and it's like with each pregnancy, she, she she's in jail, and she doesn't she doesn't see what it does to her kids. I have friends, um, some I have family members that also that did that things like took and and things like that. But the, my my main my main problem is 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 my friends seeing the way they've changed over the years since they've used the drug, rob people like Samantha and Fatima say and all that things. Um, several times I tried to break in it up at my place and to steal and things. Every morning I come out of my house, I go to school. Then I have friends of me that go that the kid go with me, so they drop out, they stand in the corners, they smoking, cigarettes and that stuff. So, so I just wondered, um, what's the use you stand in there? Um, to, what's going to happen with your life? The children that, uh, that I'm working with here is all their mothers are like, they are into drugs, they are into duck and all that things, alcohol. And, and when the children come here, I could see on the behavior. And, but, but I also believe in, I don't blame the children, I blame the parents, because if they can't be a good example for the kids, yeah. then... Then why should the kids follow? I mean, if you are an example for your child, your child is still small, your child grows up, yes. you will lead by example and that child just follows in your footsteps. My, my friends, they told me sex is their hobby. They use it as a sport because yeah. everyone talking, they, they, they're scared to, to say, I'm a virgin. It's, it's, it's part of the reality. They are, um, everyone, they are not virgins. Some they like to stay sex and stuff. Because I always tell people you must use, you must use protection, but but they always tell me, um, um, why should they use a condom, the one skin to skin and that stuff? People, they, they, they know this, like, they, 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 maybe they have like a lot of like, sexual parties and things like that, and then they, they know there's something wrong with their body, mm. and, but they just don't want to go for a checkup or yeah. something. They're scared because they know already. To me, sex is something beautiful, okay? Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying because Yes, we have HIV and AIDS. Yes, we have sexual transmitted diseases. But why should why should sex become such a filthy thing because of this monster? Okay, the decision lies with you. It's all about how responsible you are going to be and how safe you are going to be. If you have one partner and your partner only has you, then why should you care about uh, sex being? Um, such a filthy thing or sex being a death sentence. So we take them through the leadership program, we take them through life skills, we take them through computer training. They get um, HIV age education, they get teen, like I said, teen pregnancy, sexuality. Um, morals and values is, is very important to us. Um, Behaviour is very important to us. They go through all that type of training. And then when we want them to do certain activities, we give them the theme and we say, can you present something for us? It's the best, it's beats the rest. From cellular, modular, interactive, modular, ring, 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 banana pong. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, banana pong. It's no pony, it ain't a pony. I tell you, learn banana pong. It's really been a fantastic opportunity when we start a generation for change and we can see the community see the activeness of the youngsters within Freigron and it changes lives. I knew where Rainbow's meet as the, as the, as the, the first thing in my mind came that's the place I want to be that's my future I want to go there and I want to make my life further. I used to come out of school and I must, I must clean um, quickly and I mean, because I want to be here because it, ch it just changed my life completely because uh, here I learn a lot like team building and how to take leadership and all this kind of thing. I've really changed, I could see how I've really grown to be a, like a person. I think it was also that's why I'm not involved in negative stuff yeah. because in a young, from a young age I was involved already and yeah and it just, I've just grown so much. Mm -hmm. Yes. My dream about Freigron is that Freigron should be a hub of activity that will be an inspiration to any informal settlement within South Africa and even within Africa as well, you know, because we've got the Rainbow Nation right here. So what I want, I want the community to be an inspiration to other communities so that they can see what we've done here can also be done somewhere else.
My dream is that the rainbow must grow into a bigger organization. It must be the always with the same values and morals and human dignity, treating everybody fair and with respect. I would like to see that the drugs be eradicated, that the police is more effective because that is the destroyer of our society, the drugs and the alcohol.